Hello everyone, I am Susan Gerbic. I was an attendee at SciCon 2023. What you are viewing is the Sunday Papers Talks. Um, I will be doing a series of videos all showing the talks. They will be on this playlist. It is unknown at this moment if SciCon will be releasing the Sunday Paper Talks on their official channel, YouTube channel, uh, Center for Inquiry. Um, you should subscribe to them. They will start releasing the various talks throughout the conference starting about January of 2024. They will roll out every three weeks or so. But um, some parts of the conference probably will not be um, in the videos. That's just based on past experience. So what I do is um, from time to time when I go into the lectures, I will point my phone at the um, and whoever's talking or record the screen, there, I am not a professional. Um, this is just something I do once in a while. And I'm releasing those videos for you to enjoy the experience. What you're about to see is a Sunday paper talk by Rob Palmer. He's also known as the well-known skeptic. He is the first up on Sunday. This is October the 29th, 2023. And what you're going to see is he does a little intro um, mentioning Eugenie Scott and George Robb. And if you weren't at the conference, you would not know that throughout the conference, um, George Robb name checked um, Harriet Hall uh, multiple times, expanding her biography each time he got up to give a talk. And then other speakers would do the same thing. And it was quite fun. It was a running joke throughout the conference. So that explains what Rob is talking about at the very beginning. I will be probably writing an article about this for Skeptical Inquirer and my role in that, uh, which was quite fun. So there's a lot that happens at SciCon outside of the videos that you see. Um, it is amazing. Um, usually Center for Inquiry just release, releases the videos of the talks. They cut out the part that is the e MC does before and after. Um, and of course, you don't see any of the other fun activities that are happening. So there's so much more to PsyCon than just what you see on the YouTube channel. Uh, you know, maybe 500% more is happening. It's so much fun. Um, there will be PsyCon 2024 also in Las Vegas the weekend before Halloween. It will be at the Horseshoe, which is very near the Flamingo. And I look forward to seeing you there. Please leave comments. Um, in my channel if you have questions and uh, like and share. Enjoy. Oh, excuse me. Wow. Jimmy Scott just texted me and asked I make this announcement. Joe Biden has announced that he is stepping down from his presidential run due to lackluster interest by Democrats. And she's stepping up to win for the presidency. Oh. <laughs> oh, and George Robb will be his, her running mate. So. All right. So, <laughs> So let's examine three recent seemingly unrelated incidents of groups of people in different cultures claiming that they were victims of mysterious attacks. Um, did a four foot tall roller skating helmeted monkey man with metal claws and glowing red eyes, although without any wings, attack people through New Delhi and other places in India, causing injuries and deaths back in 2001? Have thousands of girls in hundreds of schools across Iran been poisoned by the government as retribution for the ongoing mass anti-hijab protests by, or by the citizens to incriminate the government? And perhaps closer to home, have over a thousand U.S. government employees and their family members in Cuba and all around the world and even at the White House been attacked and afflicted with long list of injuries, including actual brain damage, over the past seven years? by what has been referred to in some cases as sci-fi energy weapons and wielded by undiscovered assailants for unknown reasons. So let's look at the first case. So this happened back in 2001. There were numerous reports of a creature and some claimed it was a monkey-human hybrid that was attacking people throughout India. 
They were left with bites, scratch marks um, on, on different parts of their bodies. It actually led to deaths. People were panicking and fell off the rooftops of buildings and down stairwells and died. Of course, the um, witnesses gave accounts to the police, sketch artists, came up with multiple sketches. These were just two that were circulated throughout India. Um, very different. Sometimes it was clothes, but sometimes they had roller skates. Yes, roller skates. Sometimes a helmet, sometimes not. They always metal claws. Uh, the height ranged from four foot something to eight feet. Then there were um, maps that were shown in the local newspapers and online showing where attacks were happening. The press went crazy with showing, well, it might look like this, it made the situation even worse. It spread to uh, other towns, including Mumbai. And in, in my longer presentation uh, on this subject, I actually played a video in Hindi where, in fact, numerous times it was referred to as a likely human-monkey hybrid. Well, so is there a more likely explanation that that's what was attacking people? Well, let me give you some more information on the subject. This will happen when there are power outages throughout that area uh, during the hot weather and people were sleeping on their rooftops and out where they normally weren't. Police had circulated the sketches you saw and they created a reporting hotline. So, um, you know, this lent credibility to it. In fact, they offered a, a equivalent US $1,000 um, um, award if anyone gave them information they could use to capture the creature. And as you saw that sketch, the media was full of inflammatory reports and speculation making the situation work. This all gave rise to numerous hoaxes and also contributed to spreading fear that the people thought that this was actually happening. Well, the current version of the Wikipedia article is interesting because it says that it was an unknown anomaly as opposed to an actual attacker and it reported to be roaming in Delhi and they use the key word likely mass hysteria. So that's going to come up repeatedly in this talk so let's, let's talk about what that is. So injury or illness without a clear physical cause which occurs in a population is associated with many terms. One is mass hysteria, also a whole list of other things. The last two involve incidents where you actually get ill or you seem to have physical symptoms. Mass psychogenic illness, a functional neurological disorder. In that case, well, what's caused those things to happen? It could be the nocebo effect, which is the opposite of the placebo effect. You believe something bad is going to happen, and it does. And also reframing, this happens a lot. You have some injury or you get sick and since something is in the news, you attribute it to that. So let's look at another case, much more recent. This happened just last year. A lot of Americans I've talked to did not even hear about this in our news for some reason. So there were civil unrest and protests against the government of Iran, most people know about that, associated with the death in police custody of Ma Amani in September of last year. Women, including schoolgirls, widely protested um, the hijab rules. Well, then poisoning reports started to spread through the country that the government was poisoning the schoolgirls in their schools as a retribution for this. There were over 100 schools in 100 cities, as this map shows, and there were thousands of victims. Citizens blamed the government. The government blamed the people, as I mentioned, saying, oh, it's a false flag operation. They're trying to make us look bad. We wouldn't do this. The world blamed the Iranian government. Uh, the last news I could find were that arrests were made across the country, but that was back four months ago, and there's been no reports of trials. But then all of the reports of poisonings did stop. So the original version of the Wikipedia article said that it was a fact that these poisonings were happening. They named it chain poisonings in girls' schools in Iran. They said they were deliberate and the girls had been poisoned in a suspicious manner. But is there a more likely explanation for this case? Well, the current Wikipedia article 
actually covers it pretty well, thanks to Susan Gerbic's Guerrilla Skeptics on Wikipedia. The name of the article was changed to Iranian Schoolgirl Mass Poison Reports, the reports being important there, it says alleged chemical attacks, and it includes the um, reports by the government and medical officials there that these illnesses were not caused by toxic substances. Uh, there were some odors, perhaps, that made people think they were getting sick, non-toxic substances, and it even has the words mass hysteria. So let's talk about the last case I'm going to discuss in detail, the one closer to home here. This has been going on for a very long time. Could the mass hysteria, social panic, mass psychogenic illness apply to something that's been going on for seven years in the United States? The U.S. government says it's real. The medical professionals the U.S. government hired say it's real. I, I, I wrote about the subject extensively in my online column, and I've interviewed experts on it, so you can uh, Google that. But we're going to go to a, a quick report here. Well, it was announced by Donald Trump that this was a real thing before any evidence had even come in, pointed the finger, said the Cubans did it, and it was an acoustic weapon. The media went crazy with that, sonic attacks, people were supposedly suffering hearing damage. There were first uh, person reports of what it felt like to be under attack. More and more people reported it, and then it became a p political situation. Diplomats were withdrawn from the embassy, and Cuban diplomats were kicked out of the U.S. Now, I'm going to play the sound that one of the people um, recorded after they felt ill, and they said, this is evidence. So, some people in the audience will not be able to hear this, by the way. Quirk of hearing. If you didn't hear that, too bad, but here it goes again. <laughs> Did anyone not hear that high pitch whine? Okay, no hands going up. Yep, somebody, okay. So the original version of the Wikipedia article, interestingly, was, had a lot of skepticism in it. It even said it was probably mass psychogenic illness. But then as the media started to report more and more that these were real attacks, that's what has to go on the Wikipedia page. And that was not helped by the Journal of the American Medical Association, uh, publishing a report of a research group hired by the U.S. government, in fact, investigating the diplomats that claimed they had symptoms, calling it a new syndrome, and said, well, probably not acoustic, but it's microwaves. Now, this report was widely lambasted by other scientists and journals, saying it had, amongst other things, gross methodological flaws. But that didn't make the headlines. Right? The news just kept going on about attacks. They changed the acoustic perhaps, to microwaves. There were other reports that came up then said, oh, now we have evidence Russia's doing it. Uh, JAMA doubled down. There was another, um, the same group, at least run by the same person, as I understand it, um, looked at other uh, people who were claiming that they were affected and actually labeled brain differences and said, therefore, because these are real, and there's no way you could say they're not real, according to them, a wholly psychogenic or psychosomatic cause was very unlikely. But again, there was really criticism regarding this about the methodology, the erroneous conclusions, and they didn't include any psychologists on the team. So, despite, again, the pushback, nope, media went with sonic attacks, changed people's brains, um, unusual brain changes, MRI shows different, different brains in the diplomats. This happened to Canadians also. And then, in 2020, the National Academy of Sciences stepped into it, and they reported the, li the likelihood of mass psychogenic illness as an explanation is nonsense because you need evidence for that. You just can't simply say there's no evidence for anything else, therefore it's that. Well, that's what psychologists would say is what you do. And they also said, overall, they just made this up, directed pulsed RF energy appears to most likely cause. And again, the media went crazy. Yep. Microwaves are responsible for all these attacks. So that sound that I played that most of you could hear, uh, the government sent this to tech people and they, they described the frequencies and the oscillation and we're trying to figure out what kind of weapon it is. Well, it took a, a year and a half to get to the right people to analyze what that was. Here's a report on that. It's a talk here in Cuba. What sounds did embassy workers really hear? Well, now after analyzing the recording, scientists believe the source of the sounds could simply be the echoing call of 
a cricket. Science is called an Indies short-tailed cricket. Yep, crickets. I actually heard crickets. But it hardly made waves in the media, you know. More and more people were reporting issues. The U.S. government, t- different branches of the government, first it was diplomats, the military, the Pentagon started to tell people in other countries to tell them about any sickness they had. And of course, the reports just flooded in. Well, the government now put it in concrete that there were neurological attacks on American citizens. They passed a bill helping American victims afflicted by neurological attacks, cleverly Havana syndrome, right, Havana Act. The bill was passed unanimously by both houses and Biden signed it. So, one of the most egregious reports that I personally saw was 60 Minutes. 20 minutes of their 60 Minutes segment was on this topic, and it was, remember the date, because that's going to be important. So, 2022. There was not one skeptical word in it. There was no indication that anyone disagreed with that hypothesis. In fact, they were saying it's sure that people are now being attacked at the White House and the president isn't even safe. So, is there a more likely explanation for this one than it was actually sci-fi weaponry? Well, yes, scientists push back on this for, for, from the very beginning. They called it sci-fi weaponry. They said, uh, you know, it's not possible that this, these could have done this. They used the word science fiction. Um, they were talking about the cricket noise was, uh, when that was finally figured out that that's what that was. I like the Times report, what a science reporter to do when sound evidence isn't sound. <laughs> so this is one particular article at the bottom of that. You see 15 neuroscientists and physicists were saying this is nonsense. Probably one of the most important works on this was published by two scientists, Robert Bartholomew and uh, Robert Bela, a psychologist and a neurologist. Bartholomew is an expert. His whole career has been spent on mass psychogenic illness. They wrote this book two years before that 60 Minutes report. So, you know, these journalists can't even Google and find a book that is called Havana Syndrome, Mass Psychogenic Illness, and the real story behind the embassy mystery and hysteria. So I don't know if they're incompetent or they want to just put out false information for clicks. The summary of that book, and I, and I actually did the book report for Skeptical Inquirer, is this is how, this is a story of how much of the world came to believe in something that never happened. So in that book, there's all sorts of documentation saying why the JAMA reports were wrong, why the National Academy of Sciences was wrong, in words like inappropriate controls, inflated conclusions, lack of evidence, critical design flaws, methodology errors, all sorts of things like that. And all ignored by the media. Uh, and I, I like this quote by Bartholomew, the confusion over Havana syndrome can be summed up in seven words bad government, bad science, and bad journalism. So I want to say, because I'm a guerrilla skeptics on Wikipedia editor, that how Wikipedia covers these issues is very important, right? That page was created uh, pretty soon after the incident started. It's got four million page views since its creation. Just this year, which is an over half a million page views, and besides those individual eyeballs looking at it, journalists commonly refer to Wikipedia and, and what it says and use that, perhaps, in their articles. Right? So the name of the article about this has gone through a lot of iterations. First, because it was definitely a sonic attack in Cuba. That was the name. And then because people were pushing back from the science perspective on that it couldn't have been sonic weapon do this, we're just going to make it vague, health attacks. Then it became maybe not even attacks, health incidents. And the words that you know, Havana syndrome, just stuck because that means nothing. The current version of the Wikipedia article, again, thanks to guerrilla skeptics on Wikipedia, says that it's an idiopathic symptoms, meaning there's no actual cause, right? And it has all the reports from the US government agencies that finally came out after years of investigation saying available intelligence consistently points against the involvement of US adversaries in causing these reports. It's very unlikely. Now, of course, there are people who don't agree with that. Senator Mark Rubio said, no, it has to be true. I'm going to keep investigating. And all the lawyers who have clients who are suing the governments of both countries, no, that's not right. It has to be true. And those lawsuits are still going through. And they see if they can convince a jury. So 
It seems that the cases uh, that we've looked at here are all variations of, in fact, social contagion of some sort, mass psychogenic illness, rather than representing actual physical attacks by unknown mysterious villains, be it a, a, a monkey creature or um, who knows who would attack US and Canadian diplomats. Um, but there are enormous numbers of cases throughout history, and those are just some of the most recent ones. There is a Wikipedia article on the subject, and uh, I encourage you to look that up. It goes back to the Middle Ages. There are many cases of individual attacks in all through the world. The famous one you may have heard of is Spring Hill Jack in London in the mid-1800s. There's one in the United States where citizens in Illinois believe they were being poisoned during World War II. Um, many people in, in several towns thought that they were being poisoned by the enemy in, in Illinois. And as I was finishing this publication up, um, your next speaker, Adrian Hill, knew I was doing this topic and sent me this. This happened in the beginning of this month, that there were um, girls, in a, in a school girl in Kenya, uh, struck with sudden paralysis, right? And this is very dangerous because this is a country which believes in witchcraft. And these were said, maybe it was because they were possessed by spirits. Also, um, other people said, well, it was due because they have recently got the COVID vaccine. So this is an ongoing thing. Uh, but interestingly, the, one of the media reports actually reported that, hey, it's probably mass hysteria. And that's great, because it was within a few weeks of those first outbreaks. So I want to point out one underreported harm that comes out of this, specifically the Havana syndrome case. There are people who consider themselves targeted individuals. That's TIs. Uh, the New York Times did a report about this some years back. They estimated there were 10,000 people in the US. I know two people secondhand. I think the number has to be an order of magnitude more than that. They think they're in their whole lives they're attacked and surveilled by who knows who, right? This justifies, the fact that Havana syndrome was in the news for seven years justifies this. And in fact, these people go on Wikipedia saying, here's my story. This is proof that Havana syndrome is not what you're saying it is, mass psychogenic illness. It's real, because I know, because I was attacked. And it, it feeds their delusion, and that's really unfortunate. So in conclusion, I want to say that mass psychogenic illness, social panic, all those names that I mentioned, they're due to stress and fear and they happen disturbingly frequently, and they could have uh, very serious societal consequences, either at the nation level, like in the Havana syndrome, at a personal level. And no culture seems exempt at no point in time. So better education about these situations in the appropriate fields, particularly uh, medical professionals, politicians, and journalists, is desperately needed to minimize the severity of like events in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much. Called by mass psychogenic reactions, one in my country, one in Colombia, and one in Japan for the HPV vaccine. This, uh, this happened in northern Brazil, and unfortunately, uh, the state where it happened is the one state in Brazil with the lowest vaccination rate for HPV up to this day, and this was in 2014. So this has very serious consequences for society.